Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Bright Torn, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Tours and Tournaments. So, the first thing I'd like to mention in today's episode is I had said in the previous video that Brittany was independent, and I thought they were because of their coloring here. You know, they're not blue like the rest of France, but yeah, you can clearly see uh, they have a liege, and if you zoom out far enough, they are, in fact part of France. So yeah, they would not uh, be able to help out help out in this war. So it would just be us against him. And, uh, you know, he does have more troops than we do. And uh, all of our allies are within France, so would not be able to assist in that. So, so basically, we do need to get more members into this faction, which, you know, we can get hooks to force them into the faction, uh, or we can just sit and wait. And there's a lot of stuff we can do in the meantime. And something I realized before we started recording the episode today is that I never dealt with this guy, Count Amphos. And, and I know I said that Raymond wanted to, you know, execute him or, you know, just straight up take his title. But he changed his mind. Raymond doesn't want to do that anymore. Raymond wants his money now. And so we're going to go ahead and ransom him for the 50 gold. And then, once he's out... We're going to go ahead and change up, because remember, we have a hook on him. We're going to modify his his feudal contract, and we're going to force him to pay higher taxes. And it doesn't look like that's going to have a huge effect, but still, we're going to take that. And that'll give us a little bit of money. Because we're looking for more money. Uh, now, we also have his sister in prison. He is not willing to ransom her. So we could just get a, a weak hook from her. Or we could go ahead and recruit her and marry her off to a knight. I think that's what we'd do. I think that's a little bit more useful. I guess we could have done both and got the weak hook and married off. Obviously, our bodyguard here is married to our daughter, which we're still irritated about. Uh, Robert here doesn't have a spouse. He's 39 years old. This is that uh, Toulouse. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to do that then. Can we arrest this guy? I don't want to dismiss him. 36% chance of imprisoning him. Could try a murder scheme to get rid of him that way. We're not the espionage type, but if you can't arrest him and kill him, he'd get away from you. Well, then it'd be better to do it this way. Yeah, I completely forgot about this guy. He's just running around claiming he's a Toulouse and he's not. Our pride would not allow us to tolerate such things. So despite him being a really good knight, we've got to deal with him. So we're going to marry her to, to Leon. Although we don't actually want to look for a spouse. And for whatever reason we can't do this until July. Okay, we'll just wait then. That'd be the better way to do it. <laughs> Me having to go look through all those characters. And... Looks like we now have a successor here. Which, which is good because he's better than the former guy. All right, so the need to tell. So my secrets are uncomfortable burdens that I can never put down. I don't even know what all our secrets are. We might want to take a look at that. What kind of secrets our, our character had before we became him. Uh, but yeah, we could tell our friend here our secrets. I don't know if that's uh, a good idea, but would we do it? I don't know. I wouldn't really say that we have anything. We love to spend time with people. This was our attempted murder secret. Should we become our best friend? I don't even know who this character is. I don't know, maybe because we're gregarious we might do this. I don't know, whatever, we'll tell her. I don't think any air trades really would force us to have told her, though. So, looks like we're not able to find any secrets in the king's court. Well, let's go ahead and keep on looking. There's got to be. There's got to be some secrets in Paris. You know it. Uh, also, I meant to... I guess we'd do that in here. Uh, take a look at our character's secrets. And that's it. Just the attempt to to murder Count Jourdain, which our, our father knew of that secret. So yeah, overall he hasn't really been using the espionage at all. Ah, uh, yes. We do need to do something about this here. This is just too low of a success chance. So we could do this for the 40 gold, and that might just kill him. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Make him sick. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, another thing we need to deal with 
that I completely forgot about is this guy here who we blame for the death of our father. And if we can imprison him, it's a 50% chance, then yeah, we will. He might rise up in rebellion. So be it. And it looks like doing this has resulted in a much larger conflict. Also, our friend Arnolf died, so we gained a bunch of stress here. Did he have allies or something? Yeah, I'm guessing he had like some allies, and, and that's what happened here. Well, no, they wouldn't have been able to. They just rebelled against us, probably because of the tyranny. All right, so now we have a much larger conflict on our hands, and in fact, we're facing 5,000 dudes here, and also it looks like some of our counselors uh, rebelled against us. So we're going to need to call in our allies into this conflict uh, if we want to have any hope of winning this. So let's go ahead and have uh, the, the Duke of Brittany come in. And you know, we have a lot of prestige. We could just call everybody in. We can call in our wife. All right, so we're bringing in all our allies here. And now we got a much larger conflict just because Raymond wanted to rest without justification than the eyes of the of the court and our vassals, he wanted to arrest this uh, this man who he blames response or he finds responsible for his uh, father's death. So we need to get these troops raised up, but we don't want to be too close to these other armies. Let's put it. I want to be somewhat close to that army though. Let's put it right here, and that should be in a good location. Uh, so let's go ahead and raise them up, and we don't want them to split based on the supply limit. So six days. Oh, we need to turn this down. And so yeah, we'll get the assistance of our allies. We do have less troops now because of all these rebels. And so we're going to attack them here and we have our, our really good commander in charge. Uh, we do need to hire a new steward because clearly he's part of this rebellion or our former steward is. Now this situation here is going to change. We can put her back in power as the spy master. She's better than our current character anyways. And just maybe put a mayor, really good mayor here. Yeah. All right, so she's going to continue looking for secrets in Paris. He'll continue to train commanders and she'll continue with the domestic affairs. All right, so all our allies are joining our war effort. Also, we swayed him. Remember, he's the one that we are not allowing in our council. And they're going to take off. So we're going to need to... If we go across, they're going to get the bonus from both defending a river crossing and defending a forest. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do it that way. Because, yeah, I don't think this character... I don't know what his traits are, but, yeah, he doesn't have... Anything that would let him avoid the, the river penalty. Doesn't have that one trait. Uh, so this is the next trait for our daughter, Elizabeth. Which, somebody pointed out the fact that Rosa is cynical. So she is not going to want to go to the church, guys. Remember, she's not under us. Clearly, the bishop's done a poor job here. And, uh... Maybe she's just seeing him in action, <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, this is not something I'm going to believe in, uh, but she's not going to the church, essentially, so we do need to find uh, a marriage for her, basically. Uh, but Elizabeth, she already has uh, a marriage, and she's gotten two of her three traits, the arrogant and content, and so now this is greedy here. Could have her be just or callous instead. I'm actually fine with her being greedy. Doesn't really matter. I don't think we want to take on the stress right now. Alright, so we're maneuvering to try and get these guys engaged here. Alright, so at that point you're still defending the river crossing. Because we've got another river here. And so we're going to attack them there if we can. They might get away. Yeah, we're taking too long to get over here. Okay, so they're trying to get to that other thousand. And we're over here just like chasing after them at this point. But it looks like this would be the battle here. Now they're going to get the defensive building bonus. 
Uh, they're gonna be defending forest. Yeah, I don't know how much of a bonus they're getting there, but let's not let's not do this anymore. Let's just get him fought. Uh, we do have an ally who's not too far away, so he might come assist us in this. It looks like he will. We'll have to see if any of the enemy troops do. No, they won't. But we'll have our ally here helping us out. Uh, also, uh, there's a betrothal offer from King Yusef. So he's Christian, but he's not Catholic. He's King Yusef the Girthy. I mean, we're not the type that we had to to marry to a Catholic, but I mean, generally that's that was required of, in the time. So unless you were, so in this case, I feel like for you not to do a Catholic marriage, you'd have to have to be like cynical, where you just don't care, because I think it's pretty standard that people cared about uh, religion. So yeah, I'd probably say this is going to be a no here. It is his heir. So he will be a king. And so it's not like a terrible marriage or anything. Now she herself is <laughs> cynical, so she wouldn't care about that. But yeah, I feel like our character would care about this. Let's go and decline that marriage. But we do need to find a, a marriage for, for her. So we'll dip around after we finish up this war. And we'll see what, what potential alliances and stuff we could we could get there. So Toulouse is under siege, so they're going for the capital. And did we just win the war? Yeah, we captured him. We got him, guys. All right, excellent. So no reason to keep fighting this if we've already won. Let's go and enforce our demands on them. Um, so let's go ahead and disband our army. We'll take a look at this victory here, see how our knights Served us. See who did well in the battle. That was our commander. He did pretty well there. Robert. The False. That's what we'll call him. Robert the False. And this is how they did in the individual battles here. So we killed a few of their knights. Including the Count who just got out of prison. And already he's out there. Slaying men running from battle. Uh, such a brave man. So, uh... We've, we've arrested him, though it's still discolored here. There we go. All right, so we got all these vassals now who rebelled against us in prison. So we gotta figure out what we wanna do with them. So we can just like take their territory because they're all, they're all criminals. Uh, of course, we, we know that with the main guy we're trying to punish him. And so we could just execute him, gain the dread, he's a known criminal. We'd have to spend the piety. But that probably makes the most sense. But you can always execute him after you take his territory as well. So that would always be an option. Uh, his county is this one here. And so that goes to his daughter. See, I think this is what we're gonna do, guys. Is we're gonna take his title. It's not enough to simply kill him for what he did. We need to take the future of his dynasty away from him, too. So let's go ahead and revoke that title. And then we're going to kill him. So let's execute him as well. We'll give out these titles in a bit. We're probably going to have a lot of titles if we end up taking titles from all these characters. Basically, anybody who has an extra county, you'd want to take a title from them. But yeah, they all rebelled against us. And so you got to at least... At least make them pay you money. Or give you a hook or something. Uh, she's from the Toulouse dynasty. Pregnant woman from our dynasty here. So, probably be a little bit more favorable towards her. her. So just the 50 gold is fine there. And then we also have these two characters that don't have anything. Just these two lowborn characters here. Yeah, not a good knight or anything. So we'll probably just uh, get a hook from him. I'm not entirely sure who he is, though. How'd we get him in prison? Is he a rebel? I feel like he's a rebel and he should be executed, but nope, he's not a rebel because this is tyranny. Okay, so in that case, we'll just uh, get the weak hook from him. And then we got another character here. Probably same situation. Yeah, this is tyrannical. Okay, so we'll just do the same thing. Unless he's a good knight, which he is not. So we're just going to get the weak hook from him. And then this count here, 
He is intimidated by us. He's just deceitful and calm. He's possessed. So we could just ransom him for the money. This character clearly hates us, so we already know what we're going to do with him. We're going to go ahead and take his title and grant that out to somebody else. Oh, he has two titles. Alright, so you'd only be able to rightfully take one of them from him. Alright, so that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll only take the one. As far as which one, let's just take a look at which one's more profitable. Looks like this one is, so that's the one we'll, we'll take from him. This one's got more soldiers, though. But yeah, we'll take that location. So we'll revoke that title from him. And then we wouldn't be able to rightfully revoke another title. Or maybe it will allow us to. Okay, I was thinking if you did one punishment. But yeah, it will let us do it. Maybe because it's multiple. Multiple crimes here. So yeah, let's go revoke the other title as well. So we've taken all his titles. So he's a nobody now. And, you know, he's going to hate you. So you can execute him as a rebel. So you don't have any problems from him. But you'll have problems from his, his dynasty, of course. Yeah, we'll lose some stress. Is he like a, a rival now or something? Yeah, he's a rival. So another reason to, to execute him. So he's gone. And that got our stress completely removed. All right, so he's been dealt with. And then we still have a few more remaining here. Um, so this guy here only has the one county. He, he kind of likes us. I don't really have any particular problem with with this guy. Yeah, he's a rebel. But uh, again, we're kind of in the wrong with what we did. So what we're going to do is we're going to... We're just going to ask for the gold in his case. Because yeah, he's not... He's a compassionate character. He's not too bad of a guy. Oh, that's his uh, his son, by the way. I mean, I just want to ransom him. Could have got the hook as well and then changed up his... Uh, change up his contract, but it's, it's far more profitable for us to, to get the money that way. So um, let's let it play and, and figure out who's all still remaining in the prison here. But yeah, we have a lot of titles that we're going to need to grant out. Two more loyal characters. Characters that know that you don't object to your liege trying to arrest the man responsible for murdering his father? It was his territory. He did nothing to help. How do we know he didn't pay those bandits to get rid of our father? Well, it's certainly a possibility. Now, one nice thing about uh, ransoming these guys off is, you know, we do need the money for quite a few different things right now. Yeah, this might be somebody else that we're just going to take his title. And this guy here, I suppose that's also something to look at, is do they have useful heirs ah this guy's okay but this dynasty I mean their their name is is the title we're, we're gonna go ahead and just ransom him because again we do need the money for all these activities we want to do but this character here we're gonna revoke his title and give it out to to somebody else and then, yeah, I'll probably just execute him. Kind of arbitrary the way we're, <laughs> we're doing this. We're not exactly an arbitrary character, but uh, we could just be changing our mind back and forth for fickle. Some guys, you know, it's, it's one, uh, we're looking at one of the rebels and deciding that we want to punish them harshly. And then with the next one, we just change our mind and decide, you know what, these rebels, we're just going to let them go for some money. All right, so we got 524. Uh, but before we do anything else, we need to deal with all these titles. Uh, we got a lot of titles to grant out. Um, so let's go ahead and, and go through our knights and see who deserves new titles. Um, so I think it makes sense considering that our dynasty is going to be on whatever title we give to, to this man here. Uh, he's married to our daughter. Uh, they, they're already pregnant again. I think it makes sense that we give him a title. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we're going to grant him, I don't know which one yet. I suppose it makes the most sense to give him something. What all do we have anyway? Let's take a look. 
could grant them the title on Bordeaux. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll do that one. We'll be up there on the, the coast. Uh, so yeah, let's go to grant him, and thus also our daughter here, this title. And he won't be that claims knight any longer either. I'm hoping, he also can't be our bodyguard, by the way, but that's okay. But yeah, I'm hoping that their next child will get the, the giant trait. We'll have to see. He's 59, so I don't know how many more children he'll have. I like it's rid of rid of one of the titles. So let's find. I mean, he's the acclaimed knight, so unless you're gonna find somebody to replace him, we could look. There's actually the decision to to find somebody here. So let's go ahead and oh, there actually is somebody here that's worthy. Maybe this mayor. Okay. So in that case. We won't give him a title. He just got that position anyways. So let's find somebody else here. Of course, we're not giving it to Robert. Uh, Leon, we want to arrange a marriage for him. I think it was in July that we can do the arranged marriage. Now it's the 13th of September. That's interesting. I wonder why you can't do the arranged marriage. I mean, you could get it to like one of your, your people who are already vassals. And we did get a diplomacy perk. But yeah, we have time here, guys. Uh, we have, let me see how long we got till, till November uh, to grant these titles out before we start getting any uh, uh, any penalties there. So we can start a new round here. And with the August branch already being, being done, which I think did make the most sense for him here, I think we'll probably do the diplomat one next. Now, we can, of course, do these ones here to boost our children. Let me just see here. Might just want to do this first one. Just to get the one to three extra skill points. But then from there, just go down the diplomat. I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Some of these ones are nice to have, of course. I think it makes more sense for us to go down the diplomat one, but we'll get the groom to rule. We'd want to groom our, our young son to be a a good, uh, good ruler. And so you can see he already got a marshal, two marshal points. So that's pretty helpful because his marshal was terrible. And remember, we're trying to raise him with a marshal education here. So that's great. Uh, Rosa got learning. Is it always in their uh, education? That's what it seems like. And then, yeah, Bono got the, uh, the intrigue. So yeah, I think it's always what their education is. So yeah, we're going to wait before we do anything else here. Let's see what's going on here. It doesn't look like it's changing. And so yeah, that's that's still around. I don't know that we want to get rid of it though. Yeah, I don't think we'll get rid of it. I'm gonna go to speed this up. Still no secrets in Paris, huh? And she's a better spy master. Alright, we're gonna keep it going. And yeah, we'll do an activity here once we get the all the titles arranged. So it turns out that one of her children is actually the former king's children. And what's interesting here is that he's no longer a count in France. He doesn't hold the capital. So he probably got punished for his crimes and had his titles taken from him. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened here. So his brother ended up getting those titles back. Yep. So punished him. And so we, we already know that uh, we already knew about this relationship, and so it's not really surprising that one of her one of her kids is is his. Probably not the other ones, given the difference in ages here. And so she was a lot older than the king. But yeah, let me just make sure that this isn't Yeah, it's still saying the thirteenth or September. Okay. Not entirely sure why we weren't able to do that in the first place, but uh, yeah, we'll like arrange marriages for a night. We still need to find people here though to give titles to, and we continue to improve our our knights. But yeah, we got to figure out somebody. I'd like to give it to like somebody in our dynasty. But yeah, there's not really there's not really anybody. Let me just take a look. Go to the 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 dynasty tree and see if there's anybody here. That we don't know about. So I don't think so. I think this is uh, all we got. 
There are, there are their houses in the dynasty, so I guess we could look at them. And see if uh, they have any members who could give titles to. So really there's just this one, because we know that that's the, uh, the king of Jerusalem. So looking at all the members of our dynasty here, there's no males that we could grant titles to. And you know, you can't grant titles to, to the ladies. So yeah, there's really no no options here, unfortunately. I'm also noticing their brother lost his uh, title as bishop. All right, so that's unfortunate. Nobody from our dynasty. And so we're gonna need to like invite knights or something. Cause yeah, we've given titles to all our other knights or give titles to people who already have counties. I suppose you can give your our son some more titles and then he could deal with this. Cause this is all right around his area of influence anyways. So you know what, let's do that. Let's grant him both of those titles there. So have more, help out more power and influence here. And so that'll help improve the situation. So he now has all those. He's currently 11 years old, by the way. And then we still have two more titles that we had to grant out, which is gonna be this one here, I believe, and this one, this old title here. You know, the, the original rebel. Well, actually, we had one extra, so we're keeping that one. This is the only title we need to get rid of. And we already have somebody we can give that to. And it looks like he died. All right, excellent. So uh, that was because of that one option we took. So we've gotten rid of the, the false member of the Toulouse dynasty, the man who claims to be a Toulouse but isn't. Uh, so we got rid of him. Of course, he was one of our really good knights, so, you know, we did lose him. Serving us in that purpose. But I think it was worth it. All right, so we're just going to take care of this last position here, which we're doing in September once we can arrange that marriage. It's not that important, but I want to do it anyway. And we have improved his opinion as well, uh, to, sir, a second time, so I don't think it's necessary. There's, there's secrets in... The king's court, I know it. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessary to continue to improve opinion with him. So let's go and abandon that. And then we'll take a look if there's anybody here that we want to improve opinion with. Probably the, yeah, probably the marshal here. Let's go and sway him. And then let me just take a, take a look if there's anybody we want to put in here instead. Now you got an even better steward here. He's really old though. So we'll just leave this guy here for now. All right, so let's put this on speed five. Okay, we also boosted her learning because she got the uh, the pensive trait. Uh, so we could try and have her go to the church since uh, our other daughter is very unlikely. So we'll do the, the learning focus again. And we do still need to find those marriages. That's right. So it's a shame that we can't do the marriage with Flanders unless we're able to get it with uh, our former son, our former friend's son. That's who I was going to do it with. But now that he's dead, we'll have to see if they're willing to agree to this or not. So we have our daughter, Ines. Looks like we also have granddaughters already. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the giants. The giants' children. He has two daughters. Okay, so we can arrange marriages there as well. But yeah, I'd prefer to do it with our other daughter here, Rosa. Although, she'd have to wait a while. Yeah, we've already seen what happens when our daughters have to wait for their marriage. So it might be better to do it with one of the granddaughters in that case. I wonder if he'd be willing to do a matrilineal, uh, matrilineal marriage. But yeah, let's just say we do it with Juliana here. And we're trying to do him. Yeah, he definitely won't accept that. He wouldn't accept a regular marriage. Okay. And and it's largely because we have too many alliances. So we're going to get penalties for pretty, pretty much anybody. But yeah, we can try and arrange a marriage here for one of his children. So he has uh, three sons. Eldest is already married. But yeah, you could do one with one of the younger ones. He's got the spinely trait. You got this this young one here. So yeah, let's let's do that. Let's arrange a marriage for him. 
and our daughter or granddaughter maybe yeah we're trying to have her go to the church so let's do the granddaughter would he do a matrilineal he would he'd, will, he'd be willing to do matrilineal probably because this character here is only set to inherit a county so yeah that's what we'll do so that's for our granddaughter and then let's see who else we might want to to arrange a marriage for we got a lot of daughters so you could do other potential heirs here that maybe they'd be willing to accept matrilineal marriages with so like another one of our granddaughters here or what well, we did that one but the other granddaughter would he do a matrilineal he would just barely all right so let's go and do that so both our granddaughters have had marriages arranged for them, but we still haven't found anybody to arrange a marriage with for Rosa, because she's a bit older. And none of these are properly powerful enough, I feel. Yeah, these guys are all just like counts. And so if it's going to be our daughter, they need to have a little bit higher ranking than counts, like a duke or a king. Uh, there's the Duke of Normandy. So that would be an option. It might be good to try and get an ally outside of France anyways. Yeah, I suppose that would make sense. And so I don't think these guys are related to us anymore. So you have this son here. Unfortunately, he's ill. We could still try to do the marriage. He's eight. Yeah, you could try and do that marriage with Aragon. There's also her in Provence. Her son is the same age hmm yeah I think that makes sense guys let's arrange a marriage for for him and Rosa and that would be accepted matrilineal of course wouldn't it be because he's set to inherit this duchy these two different duchies so let's send that proposal off all right so it looks like we got all the marriages set up now even got marriages arranged for our granddaughters and so both of their children will now be betrothed and is this the next trait for our son looks like it um, so he got the the temperate trait okay well that's interesting so it'd be arbitrary and temperate or you could do cynical yeah I think I think we'll just go with the temperate guys so yeah, he's temperate and arbitrary now. So interesting character traits here. Uh, we got some hunts that we can go to, both of them in the same area over here. So essentially we need to pick which character we want to, whose hunt we want to go to. So I'm not entirely sure who either of these guys are. This is our vassal, one of our knights. He's the one who uh, leads our armies. And then Ricard here, he's our marshal. Okay, so I think it makes more sense for us to go to his. He's younger, and, you know, he, he leads our troops for us. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and go to his hunt. So, we'll have to, to travel there, though I don't want to have to pay extra to do so. And we'll get there right before. All right, excellent. So, yeah, we'll start traveling on over there. Well, also, we need to get rid of that title, because we're in November here. Uh, so, let's go and arrange that marriage for that knight is that Leon I don't think it's Leon it might be Leon okay I didn't realize he was the acclaimed knight okay so yeah we'll go ahead and arrange that marriage for him and that means we wouldn't be giving him the title we gotta find somebody else to, to grant it to but we're gonna arrange a marriage with Matilda so we're waiting to do this here all right so that's been done but yeah I still gotta grant the title to somebody else because yeah I don't want to have to find another another knight here though he's not I see okay so he's not the the Saint Lazarus knight okay so that's not a problem we can go ahead and grant him this title then uh, so let's go ahead that's why I didn't realize that he was the acclaimed knight but he's gonna take over this title which of course what the whole rebellion was was over so we'll grant that to him and so he'll be pleased with us. All right, excellent. 
So we dealt with all the titles we wanted to deal with. And now we just need to, need to wait for this hunt to kick up, which I need to keep this paused here so I can pick to slay the beast. And I think we're just about to the next level. Yeah, so basically, no matter what happens in this hunt, we'll get the hunter trait. And then after we're done with this, we have the money to finally throw our uh, our tournament. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to go with the same option we went with the last time we got this event. And I'm hoping that the hunt is successful. And no, it was not. Well, we still got the experience, and that's all we needed to level up. Well, we need to wait till we get back home. And then once we get back home, we'll go ahead and throw this tournament here. Uh, remember, we also need to keep the money for our son's wedding. He's only 11, though, so we do have plenty plenty of time. Uh, so once again, I got that tempting fruit. I don't know that any of our traits would lead us to say any of these ones here. We'll just say hold on, what if it's poisonous? And it's a harmless plant after all, so no problem there. So yeah, once we get home, we're going to throw this dang tournament that we've been waiting on doing for quite some time here. Uh, and then also a lover was found. Okay. So not really what we we're looking for here. Oh, that's interesting. This is involving Countess Bona. Okay, with some random wanderer who's a handsome fellow. He's pleasant to look at. I see. Okay. So there's another activity, a hunt, that we're invited to, which we could participate in. Uh, but we're not going to. We've got the, the hunter trait, the next level. So now we're getting some nice bonuses there. Our prowess is at 20, and we're 41 years old, and, and I, I want to do this this activity here, guys, before we get any older. So we're going to do the Grand Tournament. And we do have a lot more money than we were thinking we'd have, so we could do something grander, uh, but I don't think we will. We're just going to do what we were planning on doing in the first place, uh, which is going to be the... I think it was the Duel. Yeah, we'll do the Duel. And then probably... And we do have a bit more money, so you don't have to do the recital. So could instead do, like, archery or something as a hunter. It is a lot more expensive, though. Jeez. Yeah, all these probably going to increase it to 238. Yep. And we haven't done this one yet, so why not? We'll do the poetry competition. So just do things as we were originally planning. Uh, so we can also get a champion here this time. Since we're the ones throwing it, so we can select it here. And yeah, you can see that, you know, in, in this case, unlike that last time, we, we only have the, the four options that are in our court to do these positions. Now, as far as, I mean, probably just the claim knight, I would assume, would be the best one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do him as our champion. And there's no real negative to picking a champion. It's just if they happen to win instead of you, then, you know, you get uh, part of the rewards. So accommodations, again, we're doing the simple pavilion, so we don't get that... Mega event and prizes, we're just going to do the fine prizes. Could do, we obviously can't do magnificent prizes, we don't have enough money. Uh, but yeah, this is going to result in us spending the majority of our money here. And of course our, our goal is to triumph. So let's start the grand tournament up. And we're on track to qualify already. And yes, our personal champion was appointed there. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look how we're doing. We're just barely on the qualification there. I'm interested to see who all is going to attend this. Uh, but we won't be able to do anything until 21 days here. Let's make sure we don't have anything popping up here. Alright, so the tournament is now opened up. we got to wait one day, so let's just slow this down a notch here. So what we can do one of these, and I think that just going to the tourney grounds makes the most sense to, to practice. You could argue, though, that we're so arrogant that we wouldn't even feel like we need to practice, and we're gregarious. Yeah, maybe we wouldn't even practice at the tourney grounds. We just think we're <laughs> we're too awesome. Uh, so we could instead do, like, the tavern, go talk about how awesome we are, <laughs> go to the tent camp, 
go uh, talk smack to all the other contestants or just to, to talk to them. We're Gary, so we just enjoy talking to people. Uh, so I assume that's what we'd want to do. Or to go spend money at the artisan quarters, because remember, our character loves to spend money. So that would be an option as well. All these would be good choices. Um, let's go ahead and do the, the tent camp. We'll do that one. So Masters of the Desert. So knights mime the acts of war and friendly rival swagger, while interpreters laugh through their work. You Occitans have your skills, concedes Vali Ziad of al Kani, But all of you lack the will to bring a camel to heel, and even your porcine asses couldn't comfort you in one of our saddles. Nearby grooms clutch camel's reins. The Vali's challenge is, an, is in earnest, though uh, Andaluso Barani uh, terrifies horses and rules deserts and drylands atop their beasts. Uh, the stink of camels is truly foul. So we say I'll have to try. Probably would want to just because we know we're going to be great. Uh, or we can instead say that this count here is the equal of any deed no matter how unfamiliar. This is our vassal and knight. So instead we're going to try and have him do it. He does have a higher chance of success. Or we can instead say that we don't need the lumpen beast. Which I guess arrogant character might say that as well. And then you get the loyal to martial traditions. I see. We re do reduce the uh, acceptance here. Interesting. So I feel like we would probably just think that we're amazing at this and try it. So let's go ahead and do that. And we sucked. <laughs> we did not succeed. All right, so now we need to wait 20 days to do the next event here, which we might just go and spend some money at the artisan quarters here. Not that we got a lot of money, we just spent so much on this tournament here. Uh, so this is the weaponsmith, the wisdom of the hammer. I can see the gentle flicker of the flames from the other side of the road. Their warmth wraps my body in a familiar embrace even before I open the door. Inside the blacksmith lines up a batch of nails. Can I be of help, my lord? He asks. His forehead stained with coal. The air is thicker here. So we say, I've heard the smiths can break spells. Please calm my soul. Then we'll uh, get a 50% chance of increasing our score here. And we'll lose 45 stress. What's interesting here, and it might be the reason why we have this available, is because our character has the superstitious trait. So yeah, I wonder if that's why that's available or if it just normally is. Instead we can say, can you show me an expert technique? It's a 50% chance that our skill will increase moderately. So this is just 50% as well. And it's a martial challenge. 30% chance we get wounded. 65% chance we increase our prowess by one. A mere 5% chance we increase it by two. Or we say, can you improve my prize bow? Increases the durability. And the prize bow will get two plus prowess. Well, that's interesting. You could really go with any of these. I don't know if we would, uh, I mean, just because you're an arrogant character doesn't mean you wouldn't be willing to, to learn things, I suppose. But maybe just improve the, the prize bow, make it even more of a prize, because we don't really need stress loss here, guys. Now, neither of these do increase your score, though, so that's something to consider, but I think this probably makes the most sense. We don't improve the item that we have. So go with that. Although, maybe it didn't succeed. Was it percentage chance? Because, yeah, I'm not seeing any uh, any bonus there. And we'll get prestige with the more higher ranked guests that attend. And so we can see all the guests here. And we currently have a queen and two kings, it looks like. So, yeah, everybody's attending this. So, a lot of royalty here. And it begins here in 30-something days. Uh, we can do another activity, so let's go ahead and do one. Um, so, I mean, we've already done these ones here. We could always go back, I suppose. Maybe we want to try out our new bow, although I don't know if it actually improved at all. Yeah, it did. It just took a minute to update. Yeah, I guess we'll do the turning grounds. Go, Odette. Go faster. I hear a woman's voice echo across the grounds. I look up to see a small thing hurrying through the sky like a little black bolt of lightning. Soon enough, it swoops down towards a finishing line. 
Bah, you must have cheated. Your bird cannot fly that fast. You look at her. She's as graceful as a goose. Uh, the angry loser shouts with the winner looking smug. So we could say, I could learn a thing or two from this. Our character wouldn't say that. And, uh, you know, we gain stress because of us being arrogant. Uh, we could say, this is excellent entertainment. We'll lose stress. Say, double or nothing, go again. This is a martial challenge. 64% chance that we win the bet. 36% chance we lose. Or say, I don't have time for this. Would you want to say, because we're, we're gregarious. Uh, let's go with this one. You know, we love spending money, <laughs> as we've seen here. Um, so, yeah. Let's, uh, doesn't necessarily mean we're a gambler, but yeah, we're going to gamble here. And we lose the bet. Of course we did. <laughs> so that went well for us. So it looks like we'll be able to do one more activity. The duel will begin in 34 days, and we have to wait 20 days before we can visit another locale. Uh, before we do that, though, I did want to show you guys one thing I just noticed. So our son, he's got a pet dog. A loyal dog who follows this character wherever they go and he also takes that dog for walks frequently and so he's got a health boost because of that thought that was interesting oh um, yeah let's go and let this play get to the next locale which is gonna be the the tavern and three dukes have arrived yeah we'll visit the the tavern here Another round. A great roar of laughter booms from the corner where Nazar sits. And that's this character here. He is surrounded by a group of friends and new acquaintances, other entrants in the upcoming duel contest, all indulging in wine as they trade stories. So I'm guessing he's from, yeah, so he's from the Iberian Peninsula here. We've got a lot of people who've come up from Iberia to our uh, tournament. Uh, as you pass, you can't help but consider encouraging this little session. So you say innkeeper more over here. Our score will increase slightly. Uh, slightly. So basically, we're we're getting them all drunk, and so they're less likely to to do well in the duel. So this will cost us 15 gold. We'll gain opinion with all the drinkers for buying them a drink, and then we have a 50% chance that this character here would have a score decreased and get the wicked hangover decreasing his prowess. Instead we say the tables tab is on me, so really get them drunk. Uh, so we'll see it increases moderately. That'll cost us double the gold. We'll get double the opinion and a higher chance that uh, look at the wicked hangover. Instead we can say I think this a lot has had enough. We'll gain piety and then we'll result in losing opinion here. Or you can say enjoy your evening, Nazar. I'm not entirely sure why we We'll gain stress, maybe because we're gregarious. But I feel like, as a, a gregarious character and an arrogant character who likes to like show their worth, and you know, rich people love showing their worth by throwing money around, and we also just straight up enjoy throwing money around. I feel like we'd do this one, even though we actually need to be saving our money. But but yeah, this is the one we're gonna do. We don't really need to increase our score. Uh, but yeah, it looks like some of them got a, a wicked hangover, so that's that's the last one we'll be able to do now. Because we'll be just short of doing another another activity here. Looks like we did get another event though, Token of Favor. Standing in the grounds, watching the practices and preparations, I hear a cooing voice behind me. Duke Raymond, my wife, Countess Elizabeth, hurries towards me, clutching a garment. She ties a token to my arm, smiling. Wear this when you compete, it'll bring you good luck. Uh, so this is the favor of a lady, so we'd actually have to put that on, uh, but it gives you increased renown. And that's actually, you know, more rare, and so we probably would want to put that in place. is isn't going to actually bring us any luck and help us in this tournament. Yeah, we might, might want to uh, to wear that. So we could say, you are too much, my love. We'll become the owner of it. And each equipped favor slightly increases the chance of winning contest. So actually, it does uh, increase your chance of winning. Okay. Or you say, get that thing off me. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. That's awful. The gregarious character, we would uh, accept it. Um, so, oh, this is starting. Okay, hold up. <laughs> so, let's close this. And, you know, we did qualify, of course. And our champion qualified as well. And I guess we hadn't gained that, that trait yet. That has the looter trait. So, now we have that, increasing uh, opinion by 10. And we did... Sway Ricard as well. 
Okay, so what we need to do is go ahead and get that favor equipped. As far as what we're going to replace... Oh, it's already in place. Okay, so they've already replaced something. I think probably the crime and punishment. Yeah. It looks like that's what they're replacing. And probably the best thing... Yeah, it was probably the best thing for them to replace, so... I think they just did it because it was the first uh, slot, but still, it ended up uh, working out well. Um, so, the other thing I wanted to do here before we engage in this... Uh, it looks like we can't. I was going to see all the guests that have attended. Uh, but yeah, that seems to not be possible since we've already started the, the dual contest. So contestants march onto the field, taking their places around the sparring squad as the Herald announces the contest commencement. The squared off ring is being looked over in the background, rattled and shaken to ensure no give should a contestant crash into it. The dual qualifiers have come to an end and it's clear who will be put forward for the quarterfinals as it stands. The varied pitches and volumes of the crown's cheers leave no question as to the favorites. The inclusion of Azur of Talavera a skilled Andaluso Barony uh, Faris. Uh, that's that's Knight. I don't think I ever when we did when we did that uh, Iberian series as an Iberian Muslim. I don't think I ever learned how to properly pronounce uh, that term. But that's what their knights are called. Uh, but he's of obscure origin and has he has caused quite a stir. Uh, Landrin, my champion, and I will show them. I'm just taking a look at all those characters. So here's. The one that they're talking about, he's got that 24 prowess, and so he's the favorite. And uh, that's not surprising. He's a lowborn wanderer. That's a legendary blade master. Okay. And then, of course, we have ourselves, and our uh, prowess is currently 21, so we're pretty good as well. And then here's our personal champion. He's got a prowess of 12, so yeah, we'll have to see how he does. And they have two. Uh, pictures of him here. I'm not entirely sure why, but as a spender, we've got to place a bet. So let's go ahead and do that first. And we'd probably bet on ourselves because we know we're going to win this because we're so awesome. So, uh, well, that's interesting. So because we're arrogant, you gain stress. Uh, it's interesting that you actually lose stress with this trait here. How is betting this money not compulsive spending? I'm not entirely sure if we don't bet why we'd lose stress with this, but obviously the, the fickle trait, uh, you know, us changing our mind, you know, we said we're going to place a bet and then we say no, well, never mind. Uh, that also results in a stress loss. Uh, something that's interesting because you don't see fickle affect things very often because it's kind of a tricky trait to have it have any real effect. Uh, but yeah, we're going to say that we're going to bet on ourselves, of course. We could win 120 gold. And, uh, yeah, you can see we, we lose stress for this one, too. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have a, a sabotage uh, a sabotage uh, attempt that we can, we can make. You know, I think we wouldn't do this. Like our father when he had the, the chance to do so, but for a different reason. Because we already know we're going to win this. Nobody's going to beat us. We don't need any any further assistance. So this is the quarterfinals playing to the crowd. My body thuds into the wooden wall at the edge of the arena. Oh, so are we fighting our champion? Yeah, it looks like it. So Ladrin hurled me there with a snarl. No sooner has he done so that Ladrin's face morphs into a smug smile, and to my astonishment, he turns away from me completely. Raising his arms to the baying crowd, he curls his arms up and flexes in the imitation of a traveling strongman. The cheers from the crowd redouble. Those fickle peasants are eating enough. Wow, he's going to gloat. Oh, we would be very irritated about this. So he's a face me coward, and that seems to be the arrogant thing to say. But I don't know, I feel like we would say this. We'd be very offended by this. Yeah, I think we would say this. I'll teach him to show his back to me. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, you want to show off and stuff, then yeah, we're going to make you pay. And I, I feel like we would be, as an arrogant person, the fact that he's willing to do this would would really bother you. And so you would probably just strike him in rage or something. I don't know what this represents, but uh, that's what I imagine, is that you're hitting him from behind. So yeah, we're going to do that. 
A screeching chorus of metal on metal rings out as two blades scrape down each other's links, sparks glittering as they fall to the ground. I look for advantages, thinking back to when my opponent paused to play to the crowd. I am winning this fight by some margin. I just need to hold it together for a few mo moments more. We advance upon each other once more. We are both battered, both tired, and there can only be one winner. It is unfortunate that we're fighting our champion here in the first match. Because, you know, the, the benefit of having a champion is that if you lose, then maybe they'll win. And not that he's all that great anyways, but uh, let's see what we want to say here. So we say, I must remember my trainee. This is a prowess martial challenge with only 40% chance that it increases moderately. Okay. Instead, we can go with a... I guess that's probably because our low martial score. Yeah. Instead, we could say, what are you scared? This is a prowess diplomacy challenge, so much better chance of success there. Uh, one final bluff might decide this, so that's the intrigue route. Or come, let us fight, and that's the prowess one. So we could go, go with either of these. I don't know, I just feel like with our character, we'd probably do this one, even though we're better at diplomacy, so we have a slight slightly higher chance of this one being successful. Uh, let's go with this one. We uh, we did defeat him. We had a much higher prowess. A sonorous blow rings out as my weapon glances off a helmet, my opponent staggering backwards in a daze. I follow up quickly, a swiped faint left, a hammering blow right, I advance as my adversary backpedals desperately, my sword barely being deflected by the barest of margins. I sense a win and rush to claim it before Landrin recovers. I catch the strong of his blade with the last of a quick string of blows, breaking his grip and sending the weapon spinning into the dirt. The judges call an end and I have won. So we achieved victory and knocked him out of the duel. All right, so now we're in the semi-finals. And so this is who made it. So does that mean that the favorite did not make it? That's what it seems like. So instead we got this character here with his 17 prowess. I think we're gonna be fighting this one here. He's got 26 prowess. Wow, why wasn't he the favorite? And then you also have this count here with an even higher prowess. This is, that's ridiculous. All right, so as far as prowess goes, we're third. But that doesn't mean that we can't win this, as we've seen in the last tournament. Our, our uh, father was not as high in prowess as we are. So we'll have to see if we can beat him. He's actually one of our knights. And so because of that, oh yes, okay. That dull knight. Uh, but because of that, we can actually force him to concede. Would we do that though? I don't know, because like, again, as an arrogant character, I just feel like we already think we're going to win this. But yeah, I, I don't know. You could also make uh, the argument that because we feel like we're going to win this, we would not fight him because it's like, hey, this is already a win. You just need to go ahead and, and give up. This is pointless. Uh, so you could always make the argument that you'd do that as well. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to do this one. And see if we can't win this. Because we're amazing. And is it paused or something? Yeah, it must be paused here. My bad. I swing and swing again, battering away at Beryl's guard. A hefty shoulder push sends him skinny backwards, legs akimbo, and I see a golden opportunity. Acting entirely on instinct, I swing I swing my leg through a long arc, the foot thundering into his groan with a heavy thud. Oh wow. That's a dirty, dirty hit, huh? Uh, Zabrero lets out a cry somewhere between a gasp, a cough, and a groan. Uh, trembling fingers barely grasp the weapon as his eyes immediately cross with pain. Within seconds, he is doubled over, barely able to stand. And so we can say, ha, I've got you now, or oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, yeah, I don't... Based on the text here, it seems like we absolutely did mean to. Um, so we're not going to say that. We're just going to go with this. Which does mean that we get the penalty low blower for 10 years. Because we have a reputation for unfair play in the dueling ring. But I think we would do it because this is, we didn't, we didn't do it on accident. 
it seems very clear that we didn't do it on accident. So, I mean, you could just lie or whatever, but yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to take advantage of the opportunity here. Sloppy standards. Streams of commoners and nobles alike flock to the contest grounds, vying to secure a good view of the duel. A horrendous groan pierces the excited hubbub. A stand overloaded with spectators gives way with a crash. Its mass of screaming victims, victims are sent tumbling from view. Ah. Uh, wow. So, what's unfortunate here is that this is the event that you get if you don't spend, you know, at least the medium level. If you, if you spend the lowest level for the accommodations, then you always get these events, from my experience. So it's unfortunate that even though we spent more money, we still got it. Because that was the whole purpose of spending that more money. Uh, so that's kind of a shame. I've never seen it when doing the mid-level. But of course, I've only thrown, I don't know, maybe six tournaments so far. So yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, despite spending more money, we still got this negative event here. So we can say execute these so-called builders. We'll gain dread. Uh, it'll be more expensive to do construction. We'll have higher popular opinion. And the Countess will lose opinion with us. Probably because she said this is an act of God. And then no matter what happens, we get the popular opinion hit in Toulouse for the stands collapsing. Instead, we go with this option and we would gain piety. We lose 65 gold. So basically, we're compensating the victims. Very expensive. I feel like this is not my fault. I paid the money. And of course, we don't want to do that because we're arrogant. Now, you wouldn't have as high of a popular opinion hit. But yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. Instead, we say sometimes calamity cannot be avoided. We'll lose piety. And we'll get uh, an opinion boost. So yeah, basically she doesn't want us to blame the builders. Hmm. I feel like, as an arrogant character, we'd be so upset that they you know, ruined our tournament here. We probably would do something. Uh, we've seen the way Raymond acts when he feels like somebody crosses him and makes him look bad. And so I feel like he would do this one. So that's going to result in us getting some dread. And is this the same event? Yeah, it looks like this is the same exact event that we already had. And so let's go ahead and go with... We'll go with a different option this time. We'll go with the Diplomacy Challenge this time. Since both of those fit our character here. So I believe this is the, the same event that we got last time. Uh, this second paragraph might be different. We'll read it. I sense a wind and rush to claim it before Beryl recovers. He withers under my flurrying blows, barely keeping form with his guards, until at last he steps away, yielding. The judges call an end, and I have won. Alright, so we're in the finals. This character looks exhausted. Did he, uh, lose the fight? Let's see here. Alright, so it was this character that won. And they said it was a one-sided uh, bout, which makes sense with that 34 prowess that we would be seeing him at the end here. So this is going to be a difficult fight. You see the progress to victory is 67%, so we still have a, a good chance of winning. But yeah, it's definitely going to be more difficult. Alright, so we're not going to concede, of course. I can do this. We got this. So again, we got the same event here playing to the crowd. And I think we'd go with the same one here. Because, yeah, this is just offensive. How dare you treat us in such a way? Did not actually increase the progress to victory there, though. And, again, the same event here. Um, so, yeah, we'll just keep on alternating between these two, then we'll go with this one next. And it seems we did uh, achieve victory as well. So, we've won the first, the first match here. First uh, event activity, the duel. So we have achieved our intent. We didn't have any stress to lose there. But we might not qualify for the recital. We'll have to do a few things to try and get that up if we want to participate in it. Uh, but let's go to read this here. So trumpets sound, the crowd clamors, and competitors begin to assemble. 
The contest is over, and someone's limelight is being readied. A herald steps forward, voice booming out across the scene. After many trials, some tribulations, and above all else, some truly spirited competition, Duke Raymond beat Count Gutierre in the final. Raymond is our winner. Truly, there are none in Toulouse that can match my skill. My champion, Ladrin, hardly live up to the name. <laughs> and I have proven my worthiness beyond doubt. All right, so we're going to get all that money for winning. We'll get that prestige as well. The gifted duelist modifier. So we'll get uh, three plus prowess and also uh, two plus prowess per level of fame. Well, that's interesting. We'll have to see how high our prowess gets now because uh, we're fairly famous. We'll also receive a prize, and looks like that's it. He's going to get these bonuses from getting in second place. And everybody else will receive this one. Okay. So let's just take a look. Let's pause this here. Uh, we do have the ability to do more events for the next activity here. Let's just take a look at our current prowess. It is 30. Wow. All right, so a lot higher now. So how much are we getting from the, the fame? Six. We're getting six from the fame. All right, so we are not able to qualify just yet. We can do another uh, you know, activity to prepare for this. I feel like maybe going to the village is the only one we haven't done yet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Oldest Stone. A visit to Toulouse was exactly what I needed to relax before the contest. As I promenade through the streets, I see local children emulating a battle, using sticks as their weapons and yelling some or, and yelling some for the honor of my house and multiple R's. <laughs> That's probably not how that's supposed to be pronounced, but I had to throw in the pirate R sound. Uh, I stopped to admire one of the most prominent buildings, probably standing in the middle of the square. As I inspected a bit closer, however, I quickly noticed some ancient inscriptions. All right, so our learning is too low to say, wait, is that Latin? Do, do we not know Latin? Uh, we can say this stone could make fine walls back home. And then we'll get another trinket, which increases prestige by a lot. Or you say we must keep learning from them. And this increases development. Hmm. Wow, that's actually pretty helpful, getting the development increased. And we probably wouldn't equip this. But would we say this, though? Probably not. Yeah, I just don't think our character would say that. They're so arrogant. So we'd probably just get this. Just take it and want it for ourselves. But yeah, we probably won't actually equip that. We lost it? What? <laughs> lost it to ourselves? Not entirely sure what happened there. And our spy master was taken prisoner during a siege. So there's like a war going on right now. And so she was captured, so now we don't have a spy master here. She just continually gets herself captured. All right, well, we're going to have to deal with that next episode, because unfortunately this is the end of this one. We were not able to finish up the, the tournament. You know, we got a whole another event we have to do and get ready for. Uh, but yeah, the, the trinket, I just don't see that being better than what we currently have here. I mean, it is a nice shot of prestige. But it's giving you as much as Lucky Rabbit's Paw without the prowess. And yeah, I like this one here. So we're going to keep that. So we're not going to put that in place anywhere. Uh, so yeah, next episode we will finish the tournament up, do the recital. And I suppose we'll have to also have to figure out what we're going to do about not having a uh, spy master at the moment. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell and leave a comment. Uh, remember, we're not going to have another video until Wednesday. Uh, so I will see you on that episode. And thanks for watching.